good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through the offensive line, beating the double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, it's about football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition of Blue It Splits. Uh, today, I'm going to be auditing, uh, audibling a little bit. I um, was going to be doing an episode with Marcus Coleman on uh, Corey Davis. I'm still going to be doing that, but that's going to be the next episode, not this episode. This episode, we're going to be covering the other Davis that the Jets signed in Gerard Davis, the 26-year-old uh, linebacker, uh, 6'1", 225 pounds, um, one-year contract. I believe it's 5.5 base up to $7 million um, with some incentives tied into that contract. So um, a relatively big contract, especially when, you know, when you're looking at some of the other linebackers who were signed for uh, actually a little bit less who I might've liked a little bit more um, in guys like Jayon Brown and uh, Nicholas Morrow. So, you know, the, the jets and with Ulbrick and with Sala being big linebackers guy, like that's where they made um, their hay uh, I have to trust them with, with Davis and I have to kind of look into what they were saying in terms of um, him being used wrong with the Lions. And I think that stems from him um, having to read and react a little bit more. They, they ran more of a 3-4 system and obviously it's hybrid, especially coming from Patricia, who is a Bill Belichick disciple, but it was more of reading and reacting um, for Davis in, instead of just shooting um, a gap. And for the Jets, I, I think he will be um, more of a strong side guy. I think he could play Will too. Will, you have to you have to be a little bit more patient in terms of like backside cuts and things like that. So you do have to be relatively patient, but you think a little bit less or a lot of it less as a Will than you do as a Mike. So I think he could play Will. He does have the speed, but I, I think primarily he'll be a blitzer. Um, he could play man coverage. Um, he actually plays the Tampa role pretty well in Tampa too, um, which is a little bit more it's more of a difficult coverage if you can't move, but the reads are simplified a little bit more. Like you're always going to open up to the strength of, of the offense 99% of the time. So I think you could do that. I think some um, more shallow zones, you know, he's capable to do that. I would rather have him in Tampa or um, maybe towards the sideline, a little bit less going on around him or in man coverage straight up on guys. Uh, there are some times in coverage, which we'll go over, um, which I do not like him. Hold on. All right. Sorry. I had to answer a text. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll go over the strengths and weaknesses um, in, in a little bit once we officially start the review. But I, I do see what they're seeing in terms of how they could be using him. Um, but with that, I, I, it's more of like a C plus B minus type of signing for me. Um, a guy in Fant last year, I remember, was highly criticized uh, as a signing by Joe Douglas. Um, and looking at his film, I saw obviously what I saw. Uh, if you guys watched that episode, uh, people were hammering him and I said, okay, really bad. And you know, the end of 2018, um, 20, the middle of 2019, um, he obviously, um, in my opinion, starts to step up a little bit. And then in, at, by the end of 2019, uh, he was really playing pretty well. So I was pretty excited about the signing. I thought he fit the offense pretty well. And then he turned into a, uh, you know, a, a decent tackle for the Jets, maybe a little bit below average, but um, with the Davis signing, I don't say I have as much faith as I do in, in Fant. I thought that's what was, what was going to happen. First signing, you know, Douglas is a Douglas is the o, the O line guy. Like he knows these guys better than the than the fans do. So, um, and I like that signing. So I assumed, okay, well now you got Sala and Ulbrich, and they know the linebackers better than these fans do. And I thought it didn't have the same reaction. I did to a certain extent. Like I like some things that Davis can do, but I, I'm not as confident in Davis working out as I am as, as fans. I think Davis could work out. I don't think it's a complete bust of a signing, but I just, there, there are definitely questions. Um, and when I'm recording this on, uh, Wednesday, uh, obviously just to do the housekeeping, leave a review. It helps us out. Uh, subscribe to Jets X Factor. The first month is free. Try the, the off season tool. Um, and just to preview some things coming up again, uh, the Corey Davis show, I'll probably do like 25 to 30 plays with Marcus Coleman. Uh, and then after that, I'll do the remaining like 20, 25 plays, uh, on my, on my own. Um, and then after that, we're going to do rankings. And then after that, I'm probably going to end up doing joiner. 
uh, just based on how it works, uh, I'm going to get Marcus Cole back on for the for the Ke- uh, Keenan Cole show. So it's probably going to be um, Corey Davis, Sheldon Rankins, and then uh, Lamarcus Joyner. Oh, I want da- I want him for Joyner though too because he's a DB. I'll figure that out. It's going to be either Joyner or Cole, whatever. Um, and another pre- another thing coming up too is uh, <clears throat> if you like if you enjoy the live streams, which uh, I know people do, and we appreciate the support on those. Uh, you can call in a call numbers there. Um, we'll be doing that on Monday, this upcoming Monday. It's the first Monday of every month. We've been moving around a little bit. I apologize for that, but a uh, new house and uh, things obviously happen. Um, so I've been quite busy, but I'm going to try to stay more consistent with that. And then after that, sometime in May, after the draft, I'll be doing a, a off-season roundup with uh, Nanya and Sabo on this same platform uh, where we'll do a live stream. You guys can uh, chat with us and all that stuff. So watch out for the live stream upcoming. That's probably the next thing. Um, now to go into some other things that the jets have done, which has not been much. Um, Oh yeah. That's another thing I want to do too. Cause the pro days, the pro days, uh, with Wilson, with fields, I feel like there's been a lot of, um, I don't remember this, a lot of misconceptions by people. Um, and I'm not trying to kill anybody. Like I, I appreciate people trying to do their own work, but people either watch like YouTube highlights or they even if they watch a little bit of film, they put some stuff out there. That's I, I and I could be wrong too. Um, believe who you want, do your own research and, and, and trust who you want to in terms of film breakdowns, um, whether that be from jet X or whoever else, you know, out there. Um, but there's some things I definitely don't agree with. So I'm going to be putting out a Wilson and a field show before the draft, uh, probably about a week before the draft, I'll do a Wilson show, then a field show. Um, I have over a hundred plays on both guys. I plan on doing the 30 play show on each of them before the draft, whoever they draft after the fact, I will finish up those other hundred plays or so. Um, but I do want to give you kind of my opinions and I think 30 plays covers a decent amount enough, uh, or a decent amount about the guys where you get a kind of, of a general feel, which even with that though, saying that I think the first 30 plays of the Wilson review will be a little bit more unfair to his overall view, um, or a little bit more like tainted because those first 30 plays are of his 2019 um, film, which I, again, we'll talk about, but I, I think he was, he was overlooked in, in 2019. He, did, he still did some impressive, uh, impressive things to me in terms of, you know, what things we'll talk about. Um, so, and, and, and fields in the beginning of the review, I feel like a lot of open touchdowns, a lot of, uh, a lot of good things. Um, so don't be tainted by the, the Wilson review. Um, there are some bad plays in there and they definitely do, uh, simmer down as, as the review goes on. So once you get to 2020, he lights it up, obviously like 33 touchdowns, three picks. But, uh, my problem with a lot of the an- analysis is one, it's not back, uh, it's not backed up by film study. Um, and even if you are, there are some guys doing film study out there who don't really know what they're watching and kind of just, um, throw out not necessarily laziness, but things that are not necessarily, uh, correct. And then there's the people who obviously the first thing they, they talk about, um, when they talk about traits is like, Oh, I like, I like, it's not even in the arm. It's not even like, I shouldn't even say that. It's more of, Oh, well, Wilson had these stats. Wilson played against these schools. Wilson had these guys on his team fields had, had this had played good against Clemson. I like his grit. I like his toughness. I like his 40 time. Like it's a lot of, it's a lot of like really baseline level stuff in terms of playing about quarterbacks. Like how is the anticipation? Um, how are the mechanics? Uh, how is the, the pre to post snap reads? Like how are a lot of these things, the things that are actually important 40 times aren't important. Uh, pro days really aren't important. Uh, it's pro days are more important for like medical checks and things like that. But in terms of like, Oh my God, this guy threw across his body. Like, we saw all that stuff on film. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. So people are really uh, going kind of buck wild this last couple of weeks. So I do want to, um, you know, put out a, a film show of both those guys before the, before the draft. I didn't do anything on Lance. I really doubt Lance will be the pick for the jets. I think Lance has an extremely high ceiling. Um, I just don't think he'll be the number two overall pick. He might be the number three overall pick. It's going to be interesting. Uh, seems like a lot of people are talking about that pick. Obviously with the 49ers training up. You've literally heard it first. Oh, it's all about Lance. And it was all about Mac Jones. Now, maybe it's Justin Fields. You know, if I, if I was them, I would, I would, I would take Fields. Um, but again, that's without watching Lance or Jones. So that's kind of a stupid take to even say, uh, to be completely honest, I'll call myself out. I don't care. So moving on from that though, again, wrap up, uh, of the upcoming, the, the, the this next Monday or, uh, this, this Monday coming up is the live stream with myself and Kyle Smith. Uh, take the, take calls, 
uh, we will take, uh, or maybe some calls. We'll, we'll see how that goes, depending on how, uh, how maybe, and maybe, maybe we'll take calls and maybe we'll do a, uh, a quick, uh, mock draft at the end, because that's probably like the last live stream we do before the draft. Um, take the comments and obviously there's always, you know, people complain last time about not getting to all the comments. One, we're talking about a lot of things and two, uh, not to be whatever, but there's that super chat there. If you want to get any question answered and, and tended to immediately, the super chat is there for that. But getting into Davis, um, the strengths and weaknesses, again, I'm, I'm putting out these reviews relatively quickly, just based on my schedule. Um, so some of these strengths and weaknesses are definitely strengths and weaknesses. So if I repeat myself, um, in one of the strengths or weaknesses, just, just disregard that. Um, because again, I, I haven't really gone through it where I've been like, Oh, did I repeat this twice? But this is stuff I just type out when I'm watching his film. Um, I watched his 2020 season week one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, which I think is just all the games he played um, in this season. Um, strengths, size, uh, strength, overall blitzing ability, athleticism, Brings the thump, hits hard, which is the same thing. Uh, quick to engage offensive lineman. He, he brings the uh, the power in his hands, power in his legs. He's aggressive as hell. Fluid athlete, lateral agility, um, acceleration, sideline to sideline speed, uh, fast exit angles, can play a man coverage, attacks offensive lineman with good hand placement, tight elbows and timing, loose hips for size, flexibility, uh, works past partial blocks easy, um, closing speed, quick to shed, uh, for the most part, effort is top notch. Looks to knock ball uh, out. Plays good leverage, power through contact, and I said man coverage already, but I repeated that um, in my little wrap up here. Uh, weaknesses, I, I think there's a a more extensive list for weaknesses. Again, I, I feel like he's a relatively like raw player when you're looking at him, so I, I feel like that's why the Jets do have to simplify his role um, overall. But weaknesses. Uh, over aggressive shoots backside too often instead of, uh, instead of staying over top on the run uncomfortable in coverage ish uh, lacks patience uh, patience gets distracted by contact uh, takes him a second to diagnose not always disciplined on the backside uh, has to position himself better in man coverage pre snap versus traffic uh, too quick to pressure instead of staying over top um, can go caught staring back at quarterback in coverage um, which I put it's not too bad it's not awful but there are examples of it. Uh, it needs to stack more high variance player, uh, really good play followed by really bad play type deal. Uh, needs to break down more before tackles. Can get sucked up by play action. Mixed misdirection hurts him. Uh, delayed click and close at times. Uh, some hesitation on pulling trigger, which is pretty much the same thing on delayed click and close. Um, after he gets sucked up by play action, he fails to get depth consistently. So he kind of just stays where he's at. Um, I stare back quarterback too often to that already. Uh, lets people in zone without closing distance. Um, leaves feet for some tackles he doesn't need to can get distracted by contact I already said that again so um, okay sorry sorry for the the uh, the attention to the phone but um, apparently my niece wants to drive up outside after they're going to Dunkin Donuts so I gotta run outside to see my niece once she pulls up so I'm gonna pause it in a couple of minutes whenever she's here uh, can't deny a three-year-old who wants to see her her uncle you know um, I like you guys but I don't like you guys that much so, um, getting into the Davis film again, 43 plays of him again, high variance, uh, the first play that I have. And let me, I always forget how to organize the windows until I start freaking doing it. And then I'm like, Oh, this is how you need to do it because it's just, there's a lot of work behind this. Uh, okay. Let's see if this works. Hopefully it does. I, I might've screwed it up, but By the way, this is like my my workout slash office. Um, so hopefully I get some jet stuff in here, even though the downstairs gonna be the man cave, but there's like a Peloton in here and there's like weights in here. There's just a bunch of random stuff. So um, but for right now, this is this is my this is my abode. This is this is this is my house. This is where I'm doing my shows from. Mainly because there's a desk here that I could hook this freaking thing up to, which is like impossible to stay up unless you really do it right. But hopefully my audio sounds better. I know last week it was a little bit sketchy, uh, just because from the AirPods. But I'm hoping with the with the uh, the mic plus whatever the hell this thing does. Uh, I'm not a tech guy, uh, but apparently it does something. Um, hopefully it helps. So first play over aggressive. Um, Let's see. Okay. He's always, he's, he's, I, I love, by the way, I love when guys wear things that are different than their teammates. 
um, because it really helps me identify them like pre-snap. So he's always wearing like the, the gloves with the wristbands. So it, it, he's really easy to tell pre-snap. Like um, I hate watching teams like the Bucks because because the, like their their uh, red jerseys, the gray numbers, hard to see the number. Um, Corey Davis was annoying sometimes because him and, and uh, AJ Brown have similar body types, uh, which is a pain in the ass. So when players really wear like distinctive stuff, um, it was great. Like Corey Davis at certain points when you're bringing it up from a pie, the only difference you can really tell obviously is the number, but if it's from the sideline view, it's kind of hard to see, um, you know, high into the sideline, not the back view, the back view is more for offensive linemen, linebackers, defensive tackles, et cetera. But the only, like the, the difference was sometimes their socks were different. And if their socks were different, AJ Brown wore them all the way up to the bottom of his pants and Corey Davis had a little slit between the pants and his socks. And like, that's how you tell pre snaps. So it's a pain in the ass. Um, so you have a guy like Davis, he really wears distinctive stuff. Um, it's, it's for me. So, Oh, pause it. I'll be back in two seconds. You guys won't wait any more than a millisecond. All right. Getting to that first play, the over aggression from the guy who wears the, Gloves with the wristband again. Thank you, Davis. Um, and let's watch. High form right week. I don't know what the set is outside, but obviously, this is, is 83 a tight end. He's like a Y off. I don't know if he's a tight end. He looks like a tight end. And again, like sometimes he, instead of, this is where I say like he tries to shoot back side sometimes instead of letting the play out and then controlling two gaps. Um, and it hampers him in terms of making plays. Uh, here, here we see it. Um, so you got a lead zone. And instead of staying over the top, shuffling, getting hands on, making the running back make a decision, you make the decision for him. So he shoots the, the backside a gap um, or ends up being the backside a gap and takes himself completely out of the play where now obviously Montgomery can cut through that, the, the front side a gap and, and make a play upfield. Um, and it's not, it's not, this is not drastic because you have um, obviously the, the defensive back here, but if Robinson's able to crack him and completely take him out of the play and Montgomery really plants and goes right here. Um, you have this guy who's uh, he's following the, the sifter, so he gets completely taken out of the play. He's, he's way too late in his recognition. If he's taken out of the play, it's one-on-one -on -one with Montgomery and a, and a safety. So it's not a huge gain, but it could have been. So, again, his, his patience over the top of blocks, like letting things develop a little bit before he should shoot back side. Um, the, this is the, the over-aggression that I, that I labeled um, in, the, in the weaknesses. So, again, a little bit of high variance with him. Some good, some bad. Um, one play will be great. Next play will be pretty bad uh, with that type of stuff. So, because, again, when you're, when you're high variance, you, you're a risk taker. So, um, the Jets need to put him in a role where he's not as much of a risk if he is aggressive. You want to you put him in more of an aggressive role, um, make him think less uh, and I think that's what they'll do with him. Again, I don't, he's not people. A lot of people talk about Davis and say, Oh, well, you know, people are concerned now for Mosley and he's a replacement for Mosley and all this stuff. I, I couldn't agree any less. Um, that would be a mistake. That would be a massive mistake. Again, uh, I already kind of hashed out a little bit, but I think Mosley was never a guy who was a, who, he never thrived because of his athleticism. Like he's a good athlete. Don't get that wrong. Um, but he's more of a guy who's who's upstairs uh, or really good upstairs, you know, in the mind. So I think he'll come back. I think he'll be a top 15 uh, inside linebacker. I think he'll probably, if I had to bet, be, still be a top 10 guy. Uh, am I maybe, do I have a little bit too much faith in Mosley? Yes, uh, maybe I do. But um, that's that's how I feel about him. I, I still think he's a good player. He's 29 years old. He had an injury two years ago. He's rested up. Um, obviously if he comes back looking like a fat slob in training camp and yeah, I'll be a little bit uh, concerned, but two years to rest from injury, if he still looks the same 29 is not that old for a linebacker. It's really not that old in general, unless you're a running back or maybe like a corner receiver start to get, that's a little bit worrisome, but linebacker, that's fine. Um, Davis thump again, easy to find pre-snap. He's one, like I think towards the end of the season, they start to use him on the line a little bit more, but you're typically going to see him, um, as the stand up micro will. 
um, in this defense, um, which again, this is a bare front, so he's the mic. And uh, let's see what happens here. Again, this is the aggression taken on blocks. Um, I do like I do like the fact that he stays over top a little bit more patient right here. Uh, maybe he learned for the previous play. Uh, obviously, it have been a little bit tighter of a gap to shoot through this A gap, um, just due to the fact that the that the zero is getting carried out a little bit. Um, but still, I like that he stays over the top a little bit more here, which is a positive. Um, obviously, he would have really had to dip around his guy. But regardless, reads the running back. Sees the running back, uh, bend the run back, and feels that blocker. He's a he's a good feel for blockers, even if they're coming from an angle that he's not really supposed to see them. But it, like his peripheral vision is pretty good in terms of um, feeling out blocks. So he feels that block coming. Leverage drops his shoulder, pops him, hits the running back. Um, and again, he just a, he's a thumper. Like like uh, Avery Williamson was like that too, and the Jets signed him. Um, and, and I like that part of his game. I, I like linebackers, like the old school linebackers who, when you're coming in the block and you're going to tackle by him, if, if, if you're a little bit of a soft offensive lineman or a soft running back, you might have that oh shit moment. Um, and he provides that at times. So I, I like the I like the patience to stay over top of this run um, instead of shooting a, a gap and taking him, you know, self out of the play if Cohen does bend the run back, which he does. So good job on that. And then again, um, there are linebackers who would be completely taken out of this play or, or washed out of this play. And uh, Cohen might have had a big lane. Um, obviously, if he's if he's not here, even though this 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 uh, defensive end, whatever his outside linebacker, um, you know, takes his legs out, but still, good job engaging the offensive line before he engages him. Because if he does uh, let him engage him first, then it's going to be a uh, a play where the offensive lineman will have more control of him than he has control of the offensive lineman. Uh, over aggression again, right here, with Davis. The mic. Don't want. I'm not. Again, I, I think that's a big reason of why the Jets are saying that he's never wasn't a fit with how they played him. He, I don't think he should be a mic. I don't think he should be in, in a three four. Again, it's now without knowing the defensive scheme, um, and I and I will preface this by saying, if he was just it, now, if this was a hybrid front, and he was just supposed. If he was just responsible for the backside A gap, a little bit more excusable. Um, again, but you don't know every single call. Now, if this guy, if if this uh, defensive lineman was was two gapping, then it's his fault. I do I do want to uh, preface it by saying that. So it could be the the defensive ends or the defensive lineman's fault by just you know really selling out for that uh, for the play side uh, B gap, but. If that's not the case, then it's Davis, and Davis um, obviously was way too aggressive. Based on how this defensive line is playing, unless he's just absolutely terrible, um, I actually can't really say that because either way, it's a really bad play by either one of these guys. So I'm not really you, you can't really be 100 percent sure here if he's two gapping or not. If he if he's not and he just b gap, then then he needs to be a lot more patient right here um, from Davis. Um, obviously, you, you can see the speed, you see the acceleration here. Like that's this is. Again, and when you're watching this, understand that he's 245 pounds. He's not—he's not a 225 pound, 230 pound linebacker. Like he's a—he's a bigger linebacker in today's league, um, and he moves better than other, like like linebackers who are 225 to 230. So, um, oh, this is an, another playback. So it's a back-to-back -back plays of being over aggressive. Again, do you want to preface it by saying you're not really 100 percent sure if that uh, what was he a two two tech three tech if he was two gapping or not. Again, more situations where he sh where he shoots backside um, instead of saying over the top. Um, and linebackers, depending on the front, you know, can can read like B to B, A to A. There, there's a lot of different reads, um, but just based on how this play plays out, um, you would like to see him stay over the top. Oh, sorry, this this next play, you'd like to see him stay over the top. Obviously, shooting to the to the backside of this is the chances of him of him getting there, unless it's completely stuffed up front, are, are minimal. Um, he takes that risk, and again, he takes himself out of the play. There's, there's really no blocker for him, and he's, uh, and he, he, there's no blocker for him, and he takes himself out of the play. So, um, ideally, you'd see 68 right here, just focus backside, and anything crossing his face. Does he do that? Okay, so yeah, he helps out on the defensive lineman, but again, another situation where Davis shoots the backside. So that's a trend. We've only done four plays so far, and we've seen that two, three times already with the, with the one. Um, 
what is it called? Um, having that little uh, variable, if, if that defensive line was two gapping. Um, Davis right here. Counter OF. Oh, so this is a good aggression. Um, the one thing I will say about this play is obviously with the with the counter with the counter OF with the combo um, with the combo to the uh, to the backside. So um, they'd call that a, a, a combo to the thick backer. He's a thick backer for for the combo block. How they how they label it or how, as I label it. Um, and he, the, the one thing that he does do sometimes is he kind of, he kind of focuses too much on blocks and defeating that blocks before scraping over the top. Um, and times you'll see him kind of get stuck where he'll defeat the block, but he won't be in position to, 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 uh, to make the tackle because again, he, he really needs to like fully defeat it instead of only partially, partially defeating it. Um, where some guys will, will scrape over, defeat the hands. And as long as they can clear the hips, they're fine. He likes to really like set the tone and defeat guys. Uh, here you see a little bit of that where he really gets kind of into it with this guy. And then you can even see him like he, he could tell the run is going to the outside here. And instead of kind of just disengaging quickly and getting over the top to set himself up for an outside cut or whatever it may be, um, he really drops that instep, drops his hips, and and wants to completely you know shed the block and and throw the tight end before getting to the play side. So I I will um, mention that even though this is overall you could, you could see some of the strength here, um, see him stand up the blocker, and I, again. Um, he's not a guy who's going to take a playoff. Like if, if there's a guy who's not fully down yet, he is going to come in and, and try to lay a hit. I'm fine with it. Um, call it dirty, call it whatever you want. Um, I don't care. Uh, that's the, that's the way I think football should be played. If you're not down, you're going for extra yards. I should be able to hit you. And that's what happened there. Um, cool with that. So, uh, Davis Tampa two, play five. Um, he is right here again. This is a role that, and, and, you know, don't be mistaken, you know, jets cover, cover three, Quarters, cover six, cover one, cover two. They will be, you know, heavy three, uh, heavy quarters, in, in my opinion. Um, but they will run man. They will run two, you know, all of these things. No team is like even teams who are heavy zone teams, the Seattle teams of the 2012s and stuff. Um, we're still at least like 25% man, I'm sure. Uh, I think last year, um, I actually have the stats for Salah's, for Salah's defense. Um, he was primarily... Um, zone but like okay you hear there there were heavy quarters team which they actually were a pretty heavy quarters team but these are some of the rates of the 49ers last year cover one which is man coverage 31 percent that's 23rd in the nfl so let's say even if it was like 25 percent like that's the 32nd in the nfl most likely or around that area and that's still that's still a quarter of your plays that are that are man coverage so just just note that uh cover three 20 percent of the time which is 16th highest in the league quarters uh, 18th, which is, or 18%, which is fifth highest in the league cover two, uh, 15%, which is the 15th highest in the league. Um, so again, just understand you're going to be running multiple coverages. So even if they run it at 15% of the time in terms of cover two next year, you're still going to see that obviously many, many reps throughout a season. So, um, he will, I think he can fulfill this role, even though a guy in Mosley can as well. Um, obviously he wants to open up to the strength, which is the three receiver set and go empty right here. Uh, the three receiver side you want to open to that strength has a t the uh any tampa roll does that the one thing um i don't necessarily love him looking back to the quarterback the entire time like like at this moment obviously he opens up to the strength he sees he's going to be matched with the tight end who who uh is running up the seam i think he gets locked into the backfield just a quarter of a second too long i don't like this gear down right here and then make himself catch back up to the tight end because if the ball was released um earlier or obviously you know maybe the, the the safety was distracted um he could whip it um to the outsider here and uh he wouldn't be on his guy um so i would like to see him close ground a little bit more before like looking back like that and gearing down so i don't love that step that this kind of this false step right here but overall again you see the athleticism and overall it's a good rep. Like, you know, I'm nitpicking right there to be honest, um, which is what I do, but he's completely with his guy like that ball, unless it's perfect. Um, 
Now, if this is now, if this is, I think that's Trey Burton. Now, if this is Kelsey, if this is Kittle, they're going to outrun him. Trey Burton's not going to outrun him, but still, uh, you, you'd like to see him be a little more tight to him, um, up the seam right there. And again, close the ground because if, if it is the back shoulder right here, which is a hard throw, but it's, it's, it's possible. Um, but just in general for, 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 you know, for future reps, you just want to see him play it a little bit better, but um, overall he is looking back at the quarterback. So when a quarterback loads up, he is going to find him. Um, but still just a little bit more distance close would be nice. All right. Next play. Um, we see, we're going to see some of the chase down speed that he has, um, which is again for his size. Um, and sorry, again, just keep finding number 40. Um, he's, he's mainly going to be a, a stand up linebacker. Um, usually the mic. Um, if not, I will, I will point it out, but he's the mic here again. And another bear front, um, maybe three, three and again, just showing off some of the, some of the capabilities here, um, of him chasing guys down like this for, for I, one good job getting skinny um, through this gap and kind of just find like being able to avoid the hands and the little bit of like the, the dip of the shoulder right here to pet to, to again, lessen that contact window of 65 climbing up to him to shoot the gap and then find that angle. Comes at more of an aggressive angle, sees that Patterson widens, he widens and then chases him down. Uh, Patterson's not a slow guy. He's a, obviously a receiver, plays running back, running back, receiver, whatever it is. But um, some of the speed right here is, is really, really top notch. Like that, that secondary acceleration, watch the step once he, once he goes right there. From here to there, watch that in full speed. It's, it's, imp- it's, it's very, very impressive, right there. Hell of a seller. <laughs> that's that's I, I like that. I like that. He he can move. Um, so as a will, you can you can see him in that role as a Sam. Um, I, I could see him there too. So I think he's a little bit more versatile than just being the Sam taking on guys because with the Sam, yeah, you know, being aggressive is, is sometimes good, but you also have to diagnose more things coming at you. So I could see him in both roles for the Jets. I'm interested to see what they do um, you know, with him, depending on who they bring in. Like let's say, you know, they bring in a KJ Wright. Um, you know, they want to bring in a linebacker for the draft again. Free agency is not over. The Jets still have $20, $30 million uh, left, obviously, with free agents or with uh, in season costs and draft and stuff like that. Maybe it's more like $15, $20 million they have um, to spend. But let, they bring in a KJ Wright type player. Maybe you see Davis more as the will, um, you know, because you need to move a little bit more as the will. And, and KJ Wright's getting a little bit older and he can't move as well as Davis does. Now, if they bring in a guy, you know, let's say, let's just say, you know, Please God, it's not this, but you know, it's it's a Cashman who who rolls out as a starter. You know, week one, uh, Cashman would be the will. He should definitely not be a a uh, you know um, a Sam. You know, let's say it's a Davis who rolls down to the box and he's playing more of the will. Obviously, Davis plays a Sam, but I, I think he could play both. Um, obviously, both you know have uh, different responsibilities that that we have to um, to worry about. But let's see here. Uh, Davis hand right here, number 40, takes on block, uh, strip attempt. Okay. Ends up on the backside of this run. Inside zone lead. For more Joe Blewett and the rest of this video that stretches nearly an hour and a half, become a subscriber at JetX for free today, first month is a free trial. The link in the description below is the way to make it happen.